As you guys know, I love talking about video games. <laughs> And I was browsing the internet looking at the games that are coming out in the next couple of months And then it came to me, why don't I do seasonal videos? It will add another four videos a year on the channel and uh... <laughs> So I thought we need to talk about these 14 PS5 games coming out in spring of 2023. <laughs> I actually had 15 and realised Hogwarts Legacy came out in February, so I was totally mistaken. <laughs> When I say March, April, May are looking packed for gaming, oh my gosh, it's gonna be packed. We've just got banger after banger. <laughs> <laughs> These will be in order of release date, so let's start with number 14. Wulong Falling Dynasty has been compared to Sekiro, and I haven't even played that game yet because I'm, I'm too scared. Yeah, that looks hard. It is fast paced with a lot of freaking enemies that they will punish you if you're not careful. <laughs> You need to learn how to block, parry, learn enemy attack patterns and figure out what sort of fighting style you want. The combat is based around gaining and consuming spirit and avoid losing it by getting hit. You will consume spirit by deflecting enemy attacks successfully or by generally attacking enemies. So you do have to be strategic in combat as you cannot just button mash and hope for the best. The key is to deflect as much as possible as it will increase your spirit gauge. And with that spirit gauge, you can unleash martial art attacks and wizard spells, which look incredible. But again, be wary at what time you're using them as you will be stuck in an animation and that does give the enemy a chance to take you out. Now in number 13 we have a game called Tachia. Takia? Shit. I didn't know about Takia until one of you guys told me about it and it's released on PS Plus Extra and Premium so you can get it day one. It may not be your sort of game but as I play more and more PlayStation games I just love the variety in each game that I play now. You play as Tachia and you witness your father being kidnapped literally the day after your 12th birthday. You realise this evil looking thing right here called Mivora has kidnapped him and your job is to save your home and your father. Now what has truly caught my eye about this game is that as you progress throughout the game you will unlock new abilities but one of them that looks incredible is soul jumping which she can transform her soul into any animal or object birds bugs and even explosives to help you at certain points in the game exploring the world in different ways is what's beautiful about this game flying as a bird simply walking especially at night and transversing on a boat I'm not gonna lie, this looks incredible and calming. There are other different activities to do, such as rock balancing, that will unlock songs that you can play on your ukulele. Sculpting totems that will unlock shrine doors and kill some enemies that will require you to be very creative with. Now, of course, on the 24th of March, we had Resident Evil 4 release. And I've been playing this game a hell of a lot alongside Days Gone. Wow, is this remake insane it has been so long since i played the original i do wish i played that before i played the remake but oh well even if you've never played a resident evil game before you can just pick this up and have a blast with it you have to save the president's door and that's all you really need to know the guns the parrying the gore what an incredible game so far i'm not going to say too much about the story but the one thing i do love about this game is the mini games in this i don't think this was in the original you can literally have these activities and you have to hit these targets i spent so much time on this i was just like yeah i'm gonna do this for about an hour you can just have multiple playthroughs. Don't be put off because you haven't played any other Resident Evil game before. There are some crazy ass bosses that, wow, you wouldn't even think, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to do this? A shitload of weapons to choose from. Don't be too scared playing this game. It's not that scary. There's a few jump scares, but come on, man. Nothing us 30 year olds can't uh, deal with. <laughs> Mommy? Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I really enjoyed the Sherlock Holmes films with Robert Downey Jr., aka Iron Man. You know, the series with Doctor Strange <laughs> and Enola Holmes. Her uncle was Sherlock Holmes, and that was Superman. Something's going on here. 
Sherlock Holmes The Awakened looks like my sort of game. You play as a younger Sherlock Holmes who is basically one of the best detectives. You have to travel to a number of semi-open world areas to investigate the most terrifying case you have ever worked on. You have to find out who the Dark Cult are who worship eldritch beings. No idea what that is. We get to explore London which is pretty dark and gloomy and it's, it's like that for the most part but you know what today is actually pretty sunny. <laughs> Oh wait, yeah, yeah, it's gone bipolar again. We have to visit mental asylums in the Swiss Alps, New Orleans and much more. There are murders and you have to try and stay sane throughout this. But when you have these mental breakdowns, which you will in the game, there are actually puzzles that you have to work out. What I love about this game is that it's a game that you're gonna have to really think about, really try your hardest to work out what to do. Didn't even realize that the studio is located in Ukraine. It's amazing that they're still able to get this game up. So kudos to the developers. Now in number 10, we have Minecraft. Minecraft Legends, which I know it's an Xbox game, but it's still coming out on PS5. And I don't really like Minecraft. I thought it has to go on this list because there is such a big fan base with this. This new game is all about working together as it is a 4v4 PvP. Depending on what sort of gamer you are, there is quite a lot of variety in this. One of you can spend time searching for resources. One of you can look to attack the piglins, which will be an additional enemy in the game. You can spend time building your base and upgrading. So for me, if I had enough friends, this would actually be quite fun. This just seems like a game I would play once or twice online but some of you might be excited for this. If you like Horizon Forbidden West then the DLC is coming out very soon. And as I looked at the PlayStation trailer or should I say pre-order trailer I was left thinking so if I want these skins now I have to pre-order it now. That's right. I don't want to pre-order it now. No we want your money now. Okay. Now! Now we haven't seen much of the DLC so I, I can only imagine it's just more of Forbidden West. I really did like the game. I just shouldn't have played it alongside Elden Ring. That was probably a big mistake. Yeah, it's probably just more Forbidden West. Just make sure you pre-order to get those pre-order bonuses. Don't want to miss out. Now in number eight, who doesn't love Crash Bandicoot who is originally a PlayStation IP? <laughs> yeah, it's owned by Microsoft now. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. If you do pre-order the game now, like any of these damn games, you will get access to play the beta version on the April the 20th till the 24th. Now I'm definitely going to be pre-ordering this only because I love Crash Bandicoot, man. It's the first game I played on my PS1. This game just looks so much fun. The aim is to collect as much fruit as possible against your opponents who are the other memorable characters before the time frame expires. 4v4, so eight players all together just going absolutely mental. You'll need to make sure you communicate with your teammates to come out with a certain strategy to stop your enemies. And now I assume each character will have a special abilities that will reflect that character. Make sure you pre-order now or you won't be able to play the beta version. You have to wait till June. <laughs> Imagine what games are going to be like in the future. If you want to play our new game coming soon, then make sure you pre-order now to get access to the game. So they don't get access to the game at all? Yeah, yeah, they won't get access uh, to the game otherwise. Then what are they paying for? Oh, but at they launch? just get the box. <laughs> no disc. Oh, <laughs> Must my God. It's how it works nowadays. <laughs> Now in number seven, I am looking forward to Dead Island 2, which I have spoken a lot about on the live streams every week Thursday from 4 p.m. UK GMT. You should follow my second channel also. Dead Island 2 looks visually stunning, set in LA where you can choose to play out of six playable characters who each have their own unique fighting styles. You all have the virus but for some reason you have not turned into a zombie. You have gained abilities instead and what I love about the game is essentially you can have six different save files at any time so if you did want to try every character and know what one is more suited to you, you can do that and I think that's great that they've implemented that. It's been confirmed that it's going to be a semi open world area and the districts in the game are going to be separated by loading screens which it's totally fine i'm not too bothered about that it just looks so much fun the game also has side missions which encourages you to go back to the older areas to complete and just fully explore hello 
Don't run away. And there's no doubt that these animations look so good. And playing up to four player co-op, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so much fun. In number six, we have Monster Hunter Rise DLC with Sunbreak. I had to mention this because there is so many people that love this franchise. It is a fresh story. And although what I've seen online isn't as deep as you may want, but at the same time, the Monster Hunter Rise games storyline hasn't really been its main attraction. What looks great though, is that you will take on existing monsters and new monsters as well. If any of you have played the Monster Hunter, why can't I say that? Monster Hunter Rise. If any of you games have played, if you, ah, <laughs> I'm losing it. If any of you have played this gaming series, let me know what you think of it. And maybe I'll learn how to say it. The next, the hell is this again? Just making another coffee. <laughs> Just as I'm doing a video. Well, I could tell them as well how to support the channel. <laughs> yeah, well, go on then. <laughs> See you in a bit. Well, as you guys know, I do love a coffee. Oat milk or almond milk with a bit of sugar-free caramel or some flavour drops. Just want to say shout out for Paul for buying me a few coffees. So if you want to support the channel... See ya! <laughs> Oh, well, that goes that promotion. You can either hit a super thanks on YouTube or you can join our memberships if you want. <laughs> I won't bore you too much. What can I say about the 28th of April? Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And judging by the poll I did the other week, I think most people are excited for this game in spring. It was obviously delayed and it was supposedly delayed for polish, which I hope it comes out very polished. It should do. Don't do that, EA. I believe it takes place five years after the ending of Fallen Order. Just looking at Cal, does he look older and more experienced? It's actually crazy seeing the actual actor in real life. It just must be so crazy to be a live actor and you're playing in a video game. That's crazy. Fallen Order was quite hard in terms of combat and enemies, which I really did love. It wasn't just about button mashing and this will be no different. Dual wielding, coming up against new bosses and monsters. Wow. The way Cal uses telekinesis to throw objects onto enemies, you know this story is going to be epic. So make sure you play the first one. Don't skip it. The graphics look beautiful, the distant environments, the hype levels are up there. And people saying single player games are dead or dying. And I believe EA did a tweet on that once. Now in number four, on May 23rd, there's gonna be a PS5 update for a bus simulator. Bus Simulator 21 is getting a PS5 upgrade on May 23rd. This actually looks quite fun. And with that PS5 upgrade, it will have full DualSense support, 4K, 60 FPS. There will be major gameplay improvements, especially with career mode, where I believe you will have access to all the bus stops and bus models so you can choose anyone from the start. I'm going to mention it. Listen, don't diss the bus simulator. I used to get a bus as a kid everywhere. I hated it, but you know, you might want to be the bus driver. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I never never heard of this game called After Us, but when I saw the gameplay to this game, I just thought this is a beautiful game. I just love these unique games and I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this. The way the game is played reminds you a little bit of Willow of the Wisps. You play as Gaia, the spirit of life, and your goal is to transverse these stunning environments in a unique world to salvage the souls of extinct animals. Your goal is to revive these animals and at the same time being aware of these oil-covered devourers. Don't know if I said that right. Which roam the wasteland in search of remaining life. Even if this is not your sort of game, there's no denying that this is very beautiful and it's just one of those games that you just want to experience. So I'm hoping to play this game as well. Once I make it to full time, you no, I'm joking. I won't make it full time by then, but I will make time for this game, hopefully. Now in number two, you should be excited for this game that we've all been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Lord of the Rings Gollum. Oh, for, forget that. Where are you going? 
how many people were actually excited for this game? Probably about seven people. When I first heard about this game, I was intrigued, but then I was like quickly like, nah, I'm gonna pass. I'm not too bothered. Maybe for some of the Lord of the Ring fans. You get to explore as Gollum. You will use stealth, agility, climb, leap in order to survive. Well, it's pretty cool by the sounds of it. Gollum has two personalities, so it's up to you to decide to be good or bad. Probably in terms of killing enemies, I'm assuming. What is also great is that these are before the events of the book, so I believe it is an original story. So if you want a single player adventure game to play, Gollum, <laughs> you might like this game. Now, number one, four unique villains to kill some superheroes. Yeah, it looks like Fortnite. That's for me. What? Yeah, that Suicide Squad gameplay showcase was something. Like, it's crazy that I'm going to pass on this game because, like, it is intriguing to, to play as villains and you have to fight the Justice League who have been taken over, mind control, whatever. Cutscenes look really good. It just looks like a Fortnite skin. How do you play these four unique villains? All they do is just shoot. They've literally just made a Fortnite. I don't understand where you were going with it. You made the Arkham games. They have Harley Quinn swinging a Spider-Man and they have Captain Boomerang who should be called Captain Fortnite. Put the gun down. Where's your boomerang? That's coming out soon, so let me know if you're interested in that. And also, I know this is a PlayStation video. I thought we had to mention The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and I may have got more and more broke by accidentally pre-ordering the Zelda Edition Switch. Damn. What do you think of the games I have mentioned? What do you think your favorite game will be in spring 2023? Make sure you comment below and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. I played Days Gone on PS5 in 2023. Shout out to Andrew Allen. Your reviews are satisfying. Every video is more satisfying than the last, safe to say. I'm satisfied also. I'm a bit late, but congratulations on 13K subscribers. Thanks for the comment, man. I really appreciate it. And damn, all I can say is I am addicted to Days Gone. What a game. I'm so glad you guys told me to play that game. I can't put it down alongside Resident Evil 4. I still need to complete Hogwarts. But we are nearly at 15K subscribers and we're nearly at 20K. So I'm going to be doing a small giveaway at 15K and then another big one at 20. And last stream, if you didn't know, if you did watch, I had some technical difficulties with the audio from showing it from a YouTube, even though I could hear it or you guys couldn't hear it. And I realized after all of that, it was because I had it on mute. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with you. You're stupid. Stupid. <laughs>